Generally, I don't use learning interactions that are built into Adobe Captivate as I prefer to create my own. However, one of my clients has asked me to create some custom learning interactions using those that are built into Adobe Captivate. So his designer developers have something to start from. So in this case here, I've created just a, a sample project with a placeholder, a fluid box placeholder in the center where learning interactions could go. So I'm going to select this particular fluid box and I'm going to click on the interactions icon from the uh, Adobe Captivate toolbar and we're going to select learning, uh, learning interactions down here at the bottom. And this is going to open up the select interaction window where I can select any number of learning interactions that are available to me. Today I'm going to focus on the accordion learning interaction, but most of what I'm going to show you today is going to apply to just about any one of these learning interactions that you see here. So I'm going to click on the insert button at the bottom of the select interaction window, and that's going to place a default learning interaction into this particular fluid box. I'm going to then be presented with the configure interaction window. And here's where I can make some general choices that will affect how my learning interaction looks. These are a series of learning interaction themes that can be applied to any of the learning interactions that can be customized in this way. I've gone through them already and found that theme number eight is very close to what my client is looking for. So I'm going to choose that and we're going to not customize it at this stage here. Uh, we are going to just quickly look in the custom menu and show you the areas that you could customize. So if I wanted to, I could click on customize here and I of course could then choose to customize the color, the font, and the font formatting of my buttons. I could customize the content area that will appear between these buttons when I click on the accordion widget. And I can also further customize or even remove the header uh, for this particular uh, learning interaction. In fact, in this case, I'm going to do some of those customizations, but I'm going to leave color alone for a moment and I'll explain why in a few moments. So let's start with the buttons here. Let's go with the text. I'm going to choose the font that this client uses. In this case here, it's Roboto Slab for the buttons themselves. So you can see that change has been made. I'm okay with the font size. And again, I'm not going to worry about the colors right now. I'm going to go back to the top of the custom menu and we're going to go to the content section. The content is this material that's located here. So we're going to go in and go into and change the text of that from the Arial font to Roboto, just regular. And that will change there. Uh, I'm going to close this and again, go back to the head of the uh, custom. We're going to go to the header here and I'm actually going to turn the header off because I'm not going to need that. I'm going to have my own instructions at the top here. So now I can actually just simply click OK and this will apply those defaults to this particular learning interaction. I'm also going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio because I want to fill this fluid box Obviously, when we go to a smaller screen size, uh, such as like a smartphone, uh, we want to use as much space as possible because it's going to really shrink that down quite a bit. So the reason I'm not going to change the colors from within the learning interaction window itself is that if I'm going to apply many of these learning interactions, I don't want to have to customize all of the various different colors one by one, possibly a dozen or more times. I prefer to make those choices more global and have them affect all the learning interactions that I might use in a project. And one of the things, uh, if we return back to the widget properties, one of the things that you'll see under custom is the ability to apply the theme colors to this particular project. So if I choose that right now, 
I'm going to choose the theme that's built in to captivate. But of course, I'm going to want to customize that for the colors that this client's using. Here's some, uh, some colors that are there right now, but I'm going to be changing those. So we'll click on OK, and those will be applied here. And here's how you customize your theme colors. You've got a theme icon in your Captivate toolbar. If you click on that, you can, of course, select a different theme if you wish. But more importantly, you can choose to uh, get into the theme colors themselves. So I'm going to click on theme colors, and this is going to open up this small window here. Now, this particular theme is cement and steel, and it's using these particular colors there. Uh, but of course, I don't want to necessarily just choose one of the other theme sets. I want to make more specific choices. So I'm going to click on this Customize button here, and you'll see, of course, these 10 different palette colors that I can set uh, individually. Now, I've gone ahead and figured out what all of these correlate to, because in this case, I've discovered that the title and the subtitle are not necessarily the title and subtitle of the learning interaction. In fact, they're swapped. The subtitle is the title of the learning interaction, and the title is the, not subtitle, but instructions for that learning interaction. Um, and, and there's differences across the board here. But I've mapped those out, and I'll just bring that in from the side here. I've learned that the, uh, the title is a learning interaction instructions, uh, which I'm not using in this case. Again, the subtitle is the actual title. Text number one is the button text color. I am going to leave that white. Uh, text number two is the content text. Uh, I also am going to leave that gray in this case here. The button color I'm going to change because, of course, I don't want the blue. In this case, the client wants to use the orange color, uh, which I'll select right from there. And in the case of the stroke color, you can see down here, that's the button rollover and the selected color. So in this case here, we're actually going to choose a dark gray, not quite a black. And those are the changes I'm going to make. I'll put the, uh, the rest of these uh, mapped items in the description of this video down below. So if you need to figure this out for yourself, for your own themes, uh, you can do so. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save at this point here. One feedback I'd like to give the folks at Adobe, it would be really nice if I've applied theme colors to something like a learning interaction and then gone in and changed my palette. Uh, it'd, it'd be nice if it automatically updated my learning interactions as well. But what I can do, of course, is quickly update that by clicking on the learning interaction itself and then clicking on OK. And of course, then it updates with the appropriate colors that I've selected. So that looks pretty good. Let me double click it again. I need to now, of course, apply some content to it. And here's how you edit the content itself for this particular learning interaction. The first thing we need to do is we need to double click on the button. And we're going to give that button a name. You can call it whatever is appropriate for this particular item. I can also edit the content down below here, and I'm just going to grab some dummy text and paste that in here. This is pure text. I can also add uh, some audio that coincides with this, and uh, you can do that by either selecting the audio directly from your, your library, or you can import it if you've got it stored somewhere on your hard drive. Then the other thing I can do, of course, I can add an image that goes with this as well. And I've got an image here. We'll just use this image of this woman using a computer. And we'll click on OK. You can choose what, what area that that image will be. You can move the image to the left or you can keep it to the right and so on. So you can do something similar to each of these buttons here. We can customize them. Again, just double clicking on them pasting in the text. Uh, we'll go here and create a third button. And again, we'll just add some text there. 
Uh, if you decide that you only need three or less items, you can actually double click one of the buttons and then just click this delete icon, which is next to it. And that's going to get rid of the fourth, in this case, uh, the fourth uh, set of content. Once you're ready to go, you can click OK, and that will update the widget uh, or learning interaction or whatever you want to call it. It's been called a few things over the years, um, and that's ready to go. Let's preview this in an HTML5 browser and just see how that works. So here we go. There's our learning interaction. It's colored appropriately. Let's click button one. There's our content right there. Button two and button three. And of course, it gives you a nice cool accordion thing and people can go back and, and check all of that content. It is, of course, compatible with responsive design. So you'll see that the text is wrapping to another row as needed. And uh, obviously, once it gets to a point where there, it makes no sense to have the image off to the side. Uh, it'll just layer over top. And of course, it's providing you a scroll bar that you can use within the browser on your smartphone as well to see all this content as well. And then, of course, once you're ready to proceed with the rest of your course, you can click your next button and go on from there. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.